Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sam Fumo. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to have a look at how the ADSRs work inside Synth Master 2. Before I start, if you haven't subscribed, please do so as it will help the channel with bringing more videos, tutorials and also giveaways. So please do so unless you have already done. Um, so you, we are inside a, a Synth Master 2 standalone uh, version. So we have, we have our default patch or preset. Okay, let's reset that or let's initialize uh, that preset. Okay. We have a normal sort of, let's make it a little bit more pleasing, just a normal sine wave. Okay, perfect. So, um, ADSR, which stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release, your envelopes are located here in this part of the screen. And you have uh, other different ones which you can use, like multiple segments, which I will show you in multiple, in other tutorials. But for now, let's concentrate or focus on the normal ADSR. So click and hold the where it says ADSR 1, and you will find there are four of them. The first one says that it has also one target, and that is what you have by default. So if you click on the modulation metrics, it will show you here that you have source ADSR envelope 1 via nothing but is targeting the layer one voice volume and if you don't see that just click where it says matrix filter and make sure that you have uh, none selected sometimes when you click uh, on um, different controls and you move to the modulation matrix it will go it will select the filter automatically by source Okay, so let's go back to the keyboard. Now, the first uh, um, ADSR1 is uh, actually um, linked to layer one volume. And you can see here, where I, I'm highlighting the course, you see the dot moving. Indeed, if you click on the volume knob, and then you click on remove modulation, you, see, you can see that that dial, that volume um, dial on layer number one, um, as a modulation link to do ADSR envelope one. So that is what you have as a default. Now let's go back to how ADSR, um, ADSRs work. So you can see the normal curve here. Um, you have a representation as a graph. You have an horizontal scale, which is in millisecond here, okay? You can adjust um, as you normally would do in other application, your attack, like so, your decay, your sustain level, like so, and your release time. Okay, oh, let's close these uh, um, modulation setting. Okay. And you can also click uh, uh, directly on different points and um, change that to yourself. For example, let's change the curvature there. Let's give it uh, more attack. And you can see that vertical gray um, bar, which is moving very quickly and is stopping where is he in this point here, where it is the sustain level. You can see stopping there. Okay, so you can go ahead like that and change uh, your setting as you please. Now, something that I want to to show you, make sure you know, is that uh, your different type of ADSR, the default one is digital, but pay attention to what happens when I move it to Profat, for example. So let's start with digital. Let's move to Profat. So it behaves really different and much slower as well. So let's decrease and sustain like so. Let's increase a little bit more the decay time. Okay, and uh, let's give more release. So you changing the different types of ADSRs, you have different type of behavior. And in some cases, uh, you find the one which is uh, much faster as execution than others. Okay, let's leave it as a digital for, uh, for now. 
The next thing I wanted to show you is that the trigger, in, at the moment, every time you click on the note, it will re-trigger um, the ADSR. As you can see here, I was clicking different notes, and every time I was clicking or, or selecting a note, you will see that the, the, the ADSR will restart. Now, you can change that behavior to mono, like so. And in that case, you have one ADSR for all of them, for all the notes you click. So that is why it's called mono, and, it will, and, and you will have more of a sustain effect, right? And um, you can also have a random uh, um, effect, as it says, random. And uh, you have also a global um, setting, which uh, I would not use because as you, if you select it, you will find that um, the sound uh, will be driven uh, um, by global modulated sources. And in this case, if I just select it, it will just go up to a maximum, maximum as an output. Okay, so you can also set it to play as one shot. So if I have the selecting uh, and I press a note, and even if I hold, it doesn't stop on the sustain. Okay, and um, you can also have it bipolar. So if you set it bipolar, what happens here, let's choose a different type of a DSR profile, and let's try. As you can pay attention to the, to the level. So it's still sounding, still have enough sustain there. Let's activate bipolar. And you can see as it decreases, because he has bipolar values, it will go straight down roughly in the middle where there is actually no sound at all. Okay, next you can decide how much uh, uh, environment or envelope you have uh, as, uh, um, as intensity. Down to zero where you have no sound. Because it will not allow any um, enveloped amount. So it doesn't move, the, the volume here is set to zero. Okay, so it doesn't move at all, as you can see there. So you can change the envelope amount to your pleasing, okay. You can also add uh, any envelope lag. So let's go back to digital as type. I look at the graph as I change the envelope lag. Okay, so you add a lag to the envelope. Next, what you can do as well is you can synchronize it to the BPM. In that case, you will see it will change it up here. And it will also get slower. Because it really represent that graph as a per measure. So in this case, you can see a first measure up to there, second and third. And this is where it comes handy also to use snap. So you can have a snap or moving horizontally. So you can say divide it by one fourth, which is what you have there, or one eighth, like so. And then you can grab a point and as you move left and right, it will snap to the grid that you have selected, which can come handy as uh, um, you create different, uh, different ADSR and you apply them as a modulation sources. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. It's very simple how to use ADSR. Remember, you have uh, four of them and you can associate um, different ones to um, to, to different uh, um, parameters in the synth. So, for example, click on pitch and um, add modulation, go to envelopes and then select envelope number two. Click here and hold, select envelope number two. There you go. So let's uh, add some uh, attack there. Let's decrease the sustain. You have uh, decay time, like so, very little release. OK, 
Okay, in this case, I still have ADSR1 applied to the layer one voice volume here, but in this case, I have applied ADSR2 to the pitch dial, and that is why you can hear that effect. Okay, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.